to tell us more about Rex Education and to officially open today's event. Let us hear from Rex Education's Chief External Affairs Officer, Ms. Danda Carmelda I. Buhan. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, on behalf of Ms. Danda Krimelda Buharin, um, I would like to welcome each and every one of you today. With 70 years of service and dedication to education, Rex now evolves from that iconic bookstore that we all know to something bigger and more significant. We are now Rex Education, a brand, a community, an advocacy a tradition of service dedicated to inspiring every Filipino lifelong learner to advance themselves and uplift others. We have gone from providing learners with published materials to accompanying them through their lifelong journey. Learning in all forms beyond the walls of institutions, learning for delight, enlightenment, and fulfillment. True to its tradition of service, recognition and the champion philosophy, which seeks to rally and empower education and duty. An Edo Campion is a champion for education who works with the best interest of the Filipino learner in mind. Under this philosophy, Rex Education seeks, among others, to empower duty bearers in the field of education to champion education no matter the circumstances. It is through and because of this that we are excited to spend the next two hours with you as we welcome together to unveil our newest offering for the Philippine legal community, remedies of taxpayers and the government under the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines, which discusses all the important laws, regulations, and court decisions relating to tax remedies, both from taxpayers and government government standpoint that law students will find most handy and valuable. This book also features everything a tax practitioner, an accountant, a finance executive, and a business needs to know about their and remedy, especially about managing tax audits and investigation conducted by the BIR. I have the honor to present the woman behind this book, founder and managing partner of Baniked and Bello Law Office, a former president of the Tax Management Association of the Philippines, also a former vice president of Asia Oceana Tax Consultants Association, and an educator at Ateneo School of Law and University of the Philippines College of Law. Friends, Join me in welcoming our partner in championing legal education, Attorney Carlos G. Banito. Good morning, everyone. I am deeply honored by your taking part in this book launch today. Some have asked me about the evolution of this book. Others who may have had an inkling that this has been a work in progress for some time exclaimed, yes, finally. Well, if you have been teaching the same thing over and over again, it's normally just a matter of time before you start writing a book to memorialize your teachings. After all, your outline is already there. Your classroom notes and materials have been intact for decades and updates are inevitable as you continue teaching. Besides, in the course of teaching, you have identified areas of complexity or confusion as well as matters of extreme importance or significance. Moreover, in my case, as a tax practitioner, you would have come across certain matters of critical importance of procedure that may have turned not only costly to your client, but also to the government. 
So given that you already have this compilation of classroom materials at hand and decades of experience as a practicing tax attorney, you seem to feel an academic, if not a patriotic duty to share your resources, not only with your students in the law school, but with anybody who might find them useful. But as I said, finding the time to transform my classroom materials and experience into a law book has always been my biggest problem. My students through the years, both in UP and at the Ateneo, have urged me to finish my books, plural, as if I have already begun writing them. But finishing even just one book had remained a dream, even after three decades of teaching in the law school. I even considered taking a leave of absence from the law school to finish even just one book. So when I went on leave from both Ateneo and UP in the school year of 2017 to 2018, many thought that I was finally going to write or finish my books. Some rumor mongers, however, were spreading word around that I was an examiner in the 2018 bar examinations in taxation. Well, as it turned out, the rumor was indeed true. I didn't go on leave from teaching to write my books. As some of you already know, I was the bar examiner in taxation in the 2018 bar examinations. And after that, I immediately resumed teaching after completing my job as a bar examiner. And with that, since I went back to law school teaching, my hope of finishing even just one law book looked even dimmer. However, our experience since March of last year, horrible as it has been, proved ironically just the opportunity, provided ironically just the opportunity to pursue my dream of writing this first book. What with the hundreds, if not thousands of hours saved in that having to drive in heavy traffic in Metro Manila to client meetings and classes in law school. But then which book shall I write first? To be honest with you, I had planned my first book to be on income taxation, which is tax one in law schools. Income taxation is my first love and the most difficult subject to teach in law school because of its many complex concepts and principles. For the non-lawyers among you, tax one in law school curriculum is all about income taxation, nothing more. Tax two, however, is so broad since it covers estate and gift tax, value added tax, percentage taxes, excise taxes, documentary stamp tax, remedies, which is a subject matter of this book, and tariff and customs laws. So it's so broad. So why is my first book on remedies instead of income taxation? Well, I wanted my first book to be useful to as many people as possible. Not only law students, tax professors, tax practitioners, accountants, finance executives, business owners, revenue officers and officials. I want my first book to be useful to anybody who pays or ought to pay the correct amount of internal revenue tax and who would inevitably interact with the BIR, whether personally or through a representative, whether now or in the near future. As they say, 
there are two things that you could not avoid, death and taxes. And I have come across many taxpayers who made costly mistakes in the course of their filings and interactions with the BIR and other tax authorities. I have seen and represented clients who ignored a letter of authority issued by the BIR, resulting in serious consequences. You have taxpayers who failed to obey summons or subpoenas, resulting in the BIR filing criminal cases against them and the courts thereafter issuing warrants for their arrest, whether in their personal capacity as individual taxpayers or as responsible officers of a corporation. We have also seen many taxpayers who failed to file a valid protest against assessments within the 30-day period resulting in the assessment becoming final and executory. We have also come across many taxpayers who failed to file an administrative or judicial refund or tax credit claim within the prescriptive period, thereby barring the refund claim forever. And you also have taxpayers who fail to submit their supporting documents in support of their protests against an assessment notice within the prescribed period, resulting in the BIR treating the protest as a mere scrap of paper. Then a lot of taxpayers also do not know that a denial of protest by the regional director may still be appealed to the Commissioner of Internal Revenue, thereby saving the taxpayer for now the cost of docket fee in the CTA, no offense meant to the presiding justice of the Court of Tax Appeals, who may be uh, here right now. And you also save yourself the premium for a surety bond in case a taxpayer wishes to prevent the BIR from enforcing collection. So these are many errors or costly mistakes that taxpayers had committed. And the government has had its share of fiascos too. And to mention a few, for example, the non-issuance of a new letter of authority or a memorandum of assignment duly signed by a duly authorized officer when the revenue officer's name in the letter of authority are transferred elsewhere. Or the failure on the part of revenue officials to ensure that a waiver of the statute of limitations executed by a taxpayer under audit complies with the requirements and formalities of a valid waiver. You also have scenarios that we have uh, been personally involved in where uh, there was invalid service of summons or assessment notices or non-observance by the BIR of the requirements of due process in denying a taxpayer's protest or request for reconsideration or reinvestigation. Or worse, the issuance of assessment notices after the lapse of the prescriptive period. So, as I said, I wanted my first book to be useful to as many people as possible without the complex concepts of taxation, just like in income tax. Hence, this first book on remedies of taxpayers and the government in simple English and in a discussion flow that ordinary taxpayers, such as professionals, business owners and executives, self-employed individuals, small and medium enterprises, and non-stock nonprofit organizations can relate to. And this is evident from the table of contents, which is structured to provide at the outset the reader 
a comprehensive understanding of the audit and appeal processes and courses of action available under the National Internal Revenue Code. So let me now take you to an overview of the table of contents. Let's look at chapter one. Chapter one talks about the immense investigative and enforcement powers of the commissioner and the BIR, such as examination of tax returns, surveillance and benchmarking, issuing subpoenas, suspending taxpayers' business operations, like in the BIRs of Plan Candado, and inquiry into taxpayers' bank deposits under certain circumstances. Then chapters two to seven discuss the audit, examination, and assessment process that begins with the issuance of the letter of authority. These chapters tackle in detail what takes place during and after a tax audit and investigation. Understanding this audit process and courses of action available to a taxpayer, including appeal to the courts, may minimize the anxiety, enmity, and suspicion that many taxpayers harbor against revenue officers. And should the taxpayers protest and or appeal to the courts be unsuccessful, and you have the BIR threatening to issue a warrant of distraint and or levy or garnish a taxpayer's bank accounts, the taxpayer should not panic as if it's the end of the world. He may seek refuge under chapter eight that discusses the options of abatement, compromise and amnesty. Abatement may involve a condonation by the BIR of surcharges, and in some cases, even interest. A compromise allows a taxpayer to settle a deficiency assessment at 10% to 40% of the basic tax, or even lower, subject to the approval of the National Evaluation Board. Amnesty grants the taxpayer immunity from civil and criminal liabilities after availment. So how many taxpayers out there are aware that they could settle their tax deficiencies legally at 10 to 40% or even lower? I have heard of many stories where taxpayers compromise their assessments under the table, not knowing that they were paying perhaps even more than 40% of the assessment because they didn't know any better. On the other hand, if a taxpayer discovers that he has paid a tax excessively or by mistake and would like to recover the tax erroneously or excessively paid, chapters 10 and 11 of the book detail the procedure for filing such administrative and judicial claim for refund or credit. No, it is not true that seeking a refund from the BIR is wishful thinking. The BIR grants refunds or credits indeed. And with us today, I think, is Deputy Commissioner Marisa Cabreros, who would confirm that. We have obtained on many occasions tax credit certificates even today. Knowing and understanding the prescriptive periods for assessments, prosecution of violations of the NIRC and refund claims is critical to both the government and the taxpayer. These are discussed in chapters nine, 12 and 13 of the book. As the Supreme Court remarked in a number of cases, the prescriptive period for issuing assessments protects the taxpayer from possible harassment from unscrupulous revenue examiners. Prescription assures the taxpayer that he will no longer be subjected to investigation 
after the expiration of a reasonable period of time. On the other hand, prescription ensures that the BIR, which is charged with the assessment and collection of internal revenue taxes, will not tarry too long or indefinitely to the prejudice of the interests of the government, which of course needs taxes to run it. And it's also a big surprise that some people, including business owners, professionals, and self-employed, have not even heard of the Court of Tax Appeals and its vast jurisdiction. Again, with all due respect to the presiding justice, Oman de Rosario. Thus, chapter five of the book, discusses the original and appellate jurisdiction of the Court of Tax Appeals, not only because its jurisdiction has been vastly expanded in the recent past, but also because of its interesting certiorari power that seems to have slowly evolved through serial decisions promulgated by the Supreme Court. As it turned out, the certiorari power of the CTA had been there all along for the CTA staking. It's just that nobody invoked it or mustered enough courage or confidence to test it. Then chapters 14 and 16 address the controversial rulemaking power of the commissioner and taxpayer suit or judicial review, particularly in regard to the procedure and requirements for challenging a law, regulation, or any administrative issuance that is believed to be contrary to law or violative of the Constitution. Chapter 14 also discusses numerous instances when the courts have declined judicial review and why. However, one will also find here a number of decided cases where the courts assume jurisdiction, even over some petitions, notwithstanding that these were dismissible under established doctrines, thereby carving out exceptions to the general rule. So awareness of such doctrines, notably the exceptions, is beneficial to a litigant, taxpayer, or the BIR. Having said all of this, tax practice though, is not all about dealing with disputed tax assessments, refund or tax credit claims, prosecuting or defending against violations of the National Internal Revenue Code. I discovered that many taxpayers are not even aware that they could seek an opinion from the BIR as regards the tax treatment of a transaction. Taxpayers may therefore find chapter 15 on procedure for requesting BIR rulings useful. Finally, for the guidance of taxpayers and revenue officers alike. The last two chapters of the book serve as a reminder that most violations of the NIRC are indeed penal in character and that fine or imprisonment will be meted out to violators. Thus, ignoring notices or subpoenas from the BIR Tax evasion, non-issuance of receipts or invoices, non-filing of tax returns, non-registration prior to commencing business, briberies, extortions, and breach of withholding tax obligations, to name a few, bear serious penal consequences. As you can see, this book is all about sharing the little knowledge that I have gained in more than three decades of teaching taxation and practicing tax. I hope 
that you will find the book useful one way or the other. This book is my humble contribution to the effort, though not always appreciated, to make taxation more understandable to many and encourage more Filipinos and businesses to be more tax compliant, which is essential to the country's economic growth and prosperity. So once again, thank you to all of you for supporting this academic endeavor of mine and for taking part in today's book launch. Thank you and good day. Thank you very much for Ms. Ivy Mauhai for the kind introduction and to Attorney Bonique for that very rich presentation. We are very honored to receive such expert guidance, especially at the time when the study and practice of law have become more challenging. In behalf of Rex Education, allow me to congratulate you on yet another feather in your cap with the release of this book. We look forward to learning more from you through your books and lectures. Once again, congratulations, Attorney Baniked, and here's two more years of working together as stewards of legal education. Thank you. And now, we are very honored to be joined by another legal expert who can best guide us on how we can use the book for an optimum learning, especially for the upcoming bar examinations. Let us all give a warm welcome to Justice Roman Del Rosario, CTA Presiding Justice. Good day, guests and participants. I am deeply honored to be invited to deliver a testimonial on Attorney Carlos G. Baniked's recent magnum opus, Remedies of Taxpayers and the Government under the National Internal Revenue Code, or the NIRC. First, allow me to congratulate Attorney Baniked, whom I fondly call Attorney Carlos for this milestone. Looking back, he has indeed gone a long, successful way since we first crossed paths in Malcolm Hall decades ago. Over the years, we remained good friends even as we took on different directions. Attorney Carlo is now a well-known esteemed tax lawyer and a distinguished tax professor. So it is no surprise that we are here today to launch his book on taxation. Remedies of taxpayers in the government under the NIRC contains a wealth of information. It covers fundamental tax principles and procedural and substantive matters related to the administrative and judicial processes which taxpayers may undergo at the BIR level until their concerns reach the courts all the way up to the Supreme Court. The book also delves into important details, identifying possible issues which may arise and highlights points as well as nuances of notable court decisions and doctrines which taxpayers and their officers need to pay attention to in order to avoid costly mistakes. I take note of the book's chapters one and two that expound on the investigative and enforcement powers of the BIR and the tax audit and assessment process. As I always state in my decisions, the BIR's awesome power must be exercised reasonably and within the bounds of law. Otherwise, any audit conducted and assessment eventually issued may be invalidated for having been undertaken in violation of the provisions of the National Internal Revenue Code, the NNIC, 
and in this regard of the taxpayer's right to due process of law. On the part of the taxpayers, particular attention must be given to chapters 4, 5, and 6, and then protest of an assessment, appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals, and appeal to the Supreme Court. I cannot overemphasize the guidance these chapters provide on the importance of observing the period prescribed for protesting an assessment, submitting supporting documents, and appealing any action or inaction on the protest. Failure to do so may result in the finality of the assessment and deprive courts or jurisdiction to review the correctness of the assessment. Observing the period to file a claim for remand for a fund is likewise very crucial, as clearly elucidated in Chapter 10. Indeed, it is disheartening to see a denial of claim for a fund for failure of the taxpayer to timely file the same. I can only imagine the monetary losses that the taxpayer would suffer as a consequence of losing a claim which it would have otherwise been entitled had the claim been filed on time. I could go on and on in pointing out the relevance of all the chapters and how helpful and enlightening the discussions therein to taxpayers, law students, tax practitioners, accountants, and even BR officials themselves. But due to time constraints, I just leave the other chapters to our more inquisitive readers. In a nutshell, this book, Remedies of Taxpayers and the Government, under the NIRC, is a synthesis of knowledge judiciously distilled by a reputable tax practitioner and a tax professor called from years of tax experience. It promises to be a useful guide in handling tax concerns and to be candid. I have not as yet encountered a book as comprehensive and concise on the topic of remedies available to taxpayers and the government as this book. To all the students of law, you will find this book as a one-on-one -on -one tutorial experience, no less with the author himself, Attorney Carlo. So what do I say now? Please do grab a book, and I assure you, you get more than what you may have ever expected. Again, Attorney Carlo, congratulations, and I look forward to your future publications. Thank you very much, Justice Del Rosario. We are very honored to have you grace this event and guide us through how the book can help and guide us achieve our dream of hurdling the law bar exams. And to tell us more about what makes the book an expert guide and resource in the study of law, let us all give a warm welcome to Commissioner Marisa Cabreros, BIR Deputy Commissioner. Okay. Um, good day, everyone. I'm I'm actually Deputy Commissioner Marisa Cabreros. Um, Books are the quietest and most constant of friends. They are most accessible and wisest of counselors and the most patient of teachers. These thoughtful words of the late Charles William Eliot, former president of Harvard University, could well have described not just a book, but also the man and the author whose work we are here to celebrate. Because in many ways, Carlos Baniked, managing partner, of Baniked and Baniked is very much a constant friend, a wise counselor, and a patient teacher. 
I should know because I had the privilege to know all three sides of him. As a career revenuer, I've worked with Attorney Baniked on many an occasion beginning when I was on one of the staff of former Commissioner Liwai Wai Vincent Chato 25 years ago. Who, although he is, so to speak, on the other side of tax administration system, Attorney Baniked never fails to bring to all his dealings with the Bureau a rare sense of courtliness, cordiality, and dignity that distinguish him as a true gentleman. In any meeting with Attorney Baniked, you know that sitting on the other side of the table is a professional and a friend. To his many clients, Attorney Baniked is not only a friend, but is certainly also a very wise and approachable counselor, ready to force um, into battle to defend their cases. His dedication to his work and to his profession is well known and profoundly appreciated. Indeed, anyone who retains his services can be assured of his unwavering commitment to provide them with the best legal representation that his formidable cap cap capabilities can offer. This passion for excellence and dedication to the ideals of his profession constantly inspire Attorney Baniket to share his knowledge and the insights he has gained throughout his career. And so it is that the man I have also been privileged to know as Professor Baniked sets aside time in his busy week for his calling as an educator, teaching classes in taxation at the UP Law School in Ateneo de Manila Law School. I had the great fortune to be one of his students in Ateneo in mid 1990s. He was one of my favorite professors and because he is to all his students, not just a teacher, but also a mentor. He is always ready to share not just the technical knowledge of a very challenging subject, but also the wisdom he had gained through his many life experiences. Today, we are celebrating the launch of his first book, Remedies of Taxpayers and Government under the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines. This opus, the fruit of Attorney Banika's many fruitful years as educator, is a very welcome addition to the wealth of knowledge on the very challenging field of legal remedies for tax issues. We in the Bureau has always championed the duty of keeping the taxpayers well informed of the complexities of tax system. And Attorney Baniked's book will surely be an invaluable instrument in the fulfillment of this aspiration. Speaking as someone who has witnessed taxation from both sides of tax administration system, I am sure that Attorney Baniked's book can help to encourage a common understanding by both taxpayers and tax personnel alike, including law students of, various, of the various concepts and application of these legal remedies. This, more than anything, may help to encourage greater tax compliance and foster a more nuanced appreciation of our tax system. When all is said and done, however, I am confident that the readers of the book will not only gain a valuable will wellspring of knowledge on taxation itself, but more importantly, they will hear the voice of Attorney Baniket himself, who, like the book he has authored, will always be, especially to those of us privileged to know him, a good friend, an institute of counselor, and a dedicated teacher. I will surely prescribe this book for my law student and also my colleagues in the Bureau of Internal Revenue. May God bless him with ever greater success in all his endeavors. Good day, everyone. Thank you so much, Commissioner Cabreros. At this point, let us hear more about how the works of Attorney Baniked plays a significant role in shaping our young lawyers and aspiring lawyers today. Let us all give a warm welcome to Attorney Terence Conrad Bellio, Tax Practitioner. Thank you very much. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, Attorney Carlos Baniked, CTA Presiding Justice Romana del Rosario, BR Deputy Commissioner Marisa Cabreros, who also happens to be my co-professor in Ateneo Law School. Rex Bookstore representatives, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. 
and good evening to those uh, joining us from the U.S. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. 22 years ago, barely a year into law practice, I joined the firm of attorney Carlos Baniked, which was then known as Baniked and Baniked. Even while in law school, I was already firm in my decision to practice law with taxation as my area of concentration. So I decided to leave my position then as an associate in an established big law firm to join a firm specializing in tax that was small in size but big in reputation. I consider Attorney Baniked, whom we refer to as CGB in the firm, as one of the biggest influences in both my professional life and personal life. He is a patient teacher and mentor and practices his profession not only with competence and technical skill, but more importantly, with honesty and integrity. CGB is a faithful husband to Mama Det and a, and a loving and caring father to four bright daughters. I have emulated his manner of raising his family with my own family. CGB is also a very generous giver. He was my benefactor and sponsor when I undertook my LLM uh, tax studies in the US. And without his support, I would not have been able to undertake further academic studies in tax law. His book on remedies of taxpayers and the government under the NARC is a culmination of more than 30 years of teaching in the academy. When I became a law professor myself 15 years ago, my first teaching assignment was coincidentally taxation two, which includes remedies of taxpayers and the government under the tax code. I adopted CGB's outline in Tax 2, which is the very same outline on which this book is based on. Having been mentored by CGB, I'm very certain that his book on remedies of taxpayers and the government under the NIRC will be a valuable resource material, not only for law students and tax practitioners, but also for BIA attorneys, tax managers, businessmen, finance executives, accountants, and business owners. The release of this book is very timely with the bar examinations for 2020 and 2021, finally pushing through this, this, this November 2021. And to ensure, sir, that your book will fly, fly, off, fly off the bookshelves, I will begin to spread the, the rumor that you are again an examiner in taxation. Kidding aside, congratulations, sir, on your latest professional achievement. I wish you all the best and continued success on all your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you for all these kind words, Justice De Rosario, Attorney Bellio, and Commissioner Cabreros. Hearing your praises of the book gives us utmost pride for having been chosen and entrusted with the publication of this masterpiece. In the same vein, allow us to express our gratitude to you as well for being stewards of legal education and of law practice yourself. All right, once again, we would like to inform everyone that we have arranged an online raffle for those who registered to our book launch today. And so if you haven't registered yet, um, you still have time to register. And if you're the lucky winner, comment present on the comment section within 30 seconds after we announce your name. The lucky winner who's unable to comment present within the allotted time will be disqualified and our team will draw another winner. Once again, announcement of one raffle winner will be done later before we end this program. All right, and now we're opening the floor for the question and answer with our author, Attorney Banike. So feel free to comment your questions below. We'll be selecting three questions from the comments. And as we move forward, I will be reading the questions in your behalf, Attorney. All right, for our first question from Uriel Astillero. In your opinion, is there an alternative for the government to generate revenue without raising the level of taxation too much? Are protectionism and raising taxation 
correlational and effective enough for the government to generate more revenue. I understand that our tax compliance uh, in the country is quite low. Uh, I, uh, I would think that uh, if only more of us would be uh, more tax compliant, uh, we don't need to raise taxes. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have just lowered our taxes uh, under the CREATE law. But uh, hopefully, with the tax laws being uh, simplified, uh, more and more of our countrymen would be uh, paying the correct amount of taxes. I think the BIA has always emphasized that, that we should be more patriotic in the payment of our taxes. And uh, we don't need complicated laws. I think our tax laws are not that complicated uh, that many, many of us would uh, even fail to discharge our obligations in the payment of taxes. So our laws are, are all right as they are. Uh, we just need to, uh, to be more tax compliant. Thank you very much for that, attorney. Do we have any more questions from our audience? Feel free to comment on the comment section below if you have any questions. Do you have any more questions from the audience? Once again, we are opening our question and answer portion with Attorney Beniket. So feel free to comment your questions below. Okay, do we have any more questions for Attorney Beniked? Okay, we have another question, Attorney. From Janicel Kadumov. Sir, why is it that in our area, the RPT was increased by 100%? Why is it the government allowed this to happen, especially in this time of pandemic? We, all, we are all shocked by the sudden increase. I think that's... Uh... That's been happening uh, all over the country. A lot of local governments have increased their, uh, have done a uh, general revision of the uh, property values in the respective jurisdictions. My understanding is that the present values are way, way too low. And so uh, the local governments are just uh, updating the uh, market values of properties in their respective jurisdiction. In fact, if you will notice, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the cities and municipalities, the property values appearing in their current tax declarations issued to property owners are even uh, way lower than the uh, zonal value used by the BIR for internal revenue tax purposes. I'm not saying that you should. Uh, uh, equalize, but that you should raise the uh, appraised market values of properties for real property tax purposes to the level of the zonal values. But uh, I think uh, it's common knowledge that a lot of the property values uh, for real property tax purposes are still very low. 
So uh, we we have seen uh, LGUs raising by uh, even higher than 100%. You might not like that answer, but uh, that's the reality that we have uh, come across with uh, various clients. Thank you very much, attorney. Do we have a last question? Any more questions for attorney Benike? All right, attorney, I think that's it for our question and answer portion. Before um, we end this program and proceed with the online raffle, attorney, do you have anything more to say? Uh, you know, someone, someone told me, you know, if you're telling uh, everything that you have, uh, you have discussed here in your book, if you wrote everything in here, you might probably find yourself uh, less relevant in the next few years because people might just be uh, doing it on their own rather than uh, hiring your or engaging your services. And uh, my answer was, well, that's good. At least uh, a lot of things can be done now by uh, the taxpayers themselves without the benefit of uh, a tax uh, tax lawyer. I mean, that's that's right. I would have achieved my objective of uh, making this book useful to as many people as possible, and that's exactly uh, what I want. If you can, if you, you don't need a tax lawyer all the time to uh, deal with the BIR. I mean, if uh, you know the, your procedure, you know what remedies are available to you then uh, that's fine. You don't make, uh, you don't commit costly mistakes uh, any longer. Uh, unlike what we have experienced and, uh, and seen with many clients through the years, that those were really very costly mistakes. So uh, with this book, hopefully you would uh, need less uh, of our advice and uh, you will manage your uh, your uh, tax issues with the BIR legally i mean of course that's all thank you very much attorney and once again congratulations thank you all right this time as promised we will now be giving away a copy of this new book. Who will be the lucky one to win the book Remedies of Taxpayers and the Government under the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines by our beloved Rex author, Attorney Carlos Baniked? Again, reminder, we will be announcing the name of the lucky person for this raffle. If your name is called, please comment down present so we know you're here with us. We will then verify if it's you who won. However, if after 30 seconds we did not see any comment, we will be drawing another winner from our list of registrants. Also, those who already won the raffle last book launch is not allowed to join the raffle anymore so that we can give chance to the other registrants who's here with us today. Good luck. All right, congratulations to Miss Beverly Grace Umali. Miss Beverly, if you're here with us today, kindly comment present in the comments section. We will be giving you 30 seconds.
Once again, congratulations, Miss Beverly. You just won a copy of the book, Remedies of Taxpayers and the Government under the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines by our beloved attorney, Baniket. Time's up. Okay, our Rex representative is checking if Miss Beverly made the cut. Okay, unfortunately, Miss Beverly was unable to come in present. So we draw another winner. So congratulations to Miss Sheila Marie Sanchez. Miss Sheila, if you're here with us today, please do comment present. Um, Once again, I think Miss Beverly is here, Bob. Oh, okay. All right. So, congratulations to Miss Beverly. I think she made the cut. She commented present on the comment section. Is that right? Yes, Bob. Yes. All right. So, once again, congratulations, Miss Beverly. You just won the book, the new copy of the book, Remedies of Taxpayers and the Government under the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines by Attorney Baniked. So, um, a Rex representative will be sending you an email for the details on how to claim your prize. Once again, Ms. Beverly, congratulations. At this point... We will now listen to Rex Education's General Manager for CLV Law, Ms. Mr. Reginald Suriano, for his word of thanks. Thank you, Diane. Pleasant good day to everybody, uh, Ms. Danta Cremelda Buhain, our Chief External Affairs Officer, Honorable Justice Roman Del Rosario, uh, good, uh, good day, uh, Deputy Commissioner Marisa Cabrero, I'm sorry, Cabreros, uh, Good day as well. And Attorney Terence Conrad Bellio. Distinguished guests, faculty members, law students, everybody in this uh, very uh, prestigious event. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Allow me to be the first to thank Attorney Carlos Baniked for his successful book. Uh, we are truly happy and grateful po for the partnership that you have allowed Rex to be your partner in providing knowledge to our law learners and to our practitioners. In my closing remarks, I would like to share the same story I shared with the Nordi Miniked when I was talking about my time when I was in college and took a thesis. What inspired me was the fact that when I was looking around and discussing a topic, I saw that the most thing, the, the thing that really affected us was taxes. And I actually did a case study on the communication interaction between the Bureau of Internal Revenue and its taxpayers. In that simple thesis, in that simple study, I wanted to show and understand what were the gaps in terms of why there are so many uh, questions and concerns about taxpayers and why there were so many issues with taxpayers. And I think the biggest, biggest uh, finding and insight that I found is that we need to inform properly our taxpayers of their duty. We need to inform everybody about what is the importance of complying and being able to uh, comply with the tax laws. That is the one thing that needs to be very, very evident, educating each and every one of us because, as we know, tax is a, best, is, is a part of our governance. It's a part of our social contract with our government. In order for the government to run and do its services, we also have to do our part and pay our taxes. 
So it was because of that that inspired me to say that maybe this is where I needed to focus my study on. But that finding also showed the fact that it only begins with educating. What will be the solutions moving forward should you find yourself in a situation that you need to look for so solutions? And this is where the book of attorney uh, Baniket comes in. His knowledge, his skill, his ability to show us solutions, the legal remedies in order for us to solve our tax situations if we find ourselves in that, in that manner is why it's important that we continuously educate our taxpayers. Because at the end of the day, it is that interaction, it is that fulfillment of the social contract that we need to be able to empower each and every one of us so that our government functions and we also function as well. So again, it is that sharing of insight po na nakikita ko that it is our duty to be a responsible member of society and to do so let us empower our lawyers who are the guardians, who are our agents of justice, so that they can be also the ones who can help each and every taxpayer, each and every one of us, be good citizens. So again, in behalf of the Rex family, we would like to thank each and every one of you who attended this great seminar and this book launch. But more importantly, maraming maraming salamat po, Attorney Baniken, for being a partner of Rex. We look forward to uh, future projects with you. And again, congratulations, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Reggie. On that note, we have come to the end of this morning's program. Indeed, it was a very productive learning morning with our legal luminary, Attorney Carlos G. Baniged, and our distinguished guests from the field of law. In behalf of Rex Education, I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude for having been chosen as your partner in legal education. We look forward to more years of our fruitful partnership as we continue to work together to enable students and lawyers achieve their dreams of becoming lawyers and excelling as one. To everyone who joined us this afternoon, this morning, thank you for learning with us and for choosing Rex to be your partner in learning. See you all on our next book launch and lecture. Thank you and keep soaring, Edo Campions. Um, hello, Ms. Diane. share my screen. Um, visible na po yung screen ko? Yes po. Okay. Alright, so we will be having another raffle. So who will be the lucky winner? Congratulations to Miss Debbie Jean De Dejamco or Dejamco. Congratulations, Miss Debbie. You just won a copy of Attorney Baniked's new book. So if you're here with us, please do comment present.
was Miss Debbie able to comment? Okay. So unfortunately, Miss Debbie wasn't able to comment present in the comment section. So we will be drawing another winner from our list of registrants. Congratulations to Sir Edward Tito Abinoha. Sir Edward, if you're here with us today, please do comment present on the comment section. We will give you 30 seconds to comment present. Okay, so Sir Eddie wasn't able to comment as well. So we will be drawing another winner. Please spin the wheel. Okay, we have a winner. Congratulations to Jupiter Nakario. Sir Jupiter, if you're here with us, please, please do comment present on the comment section. Was Sir Jupiter able to comment? Okay, so unfortunately, Sir Jupiter was not able to comment as well. So we will continue drawing the raffle. Okay, please spin the wheel. All right, we have a winner. Congratulations to Mr. Jose Fernando Manalo. Sir Jose, if you're here with us, please comment present. We will be giving you 30 seconds to comment present on the comment section below.
Okay, so we will be drawing another winner from our list of registrants. Congratulations to Mr. Mark Lopena. Sir Mark, if you're here with us today, please comment present. Okay, so Sir Mark was unable to comment, present, so we will be drawing another winner. All right, congratulations to Miss Kesha Guanco. Miss Kesha, if you're here with us today, please comment. Present. All right. Congratulations to Miss Kesha. You have won a copy of the book Remedies of Taxpayers and the Government under the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines by Attorney Baniked. All right, a Rex representative will be sending you an email for the details on how to claim your prize. Once again, congratulations, Ms. Kesha. And to everyone who joined us this after, this morning, thank you for learning with us and for choosing Rex to be your partner in learning. See you all on our next book launch and lecture. Thank you and keep soaring, Edo Campions.